you're a hardcore Magic the Gathering fan. You know every Magic set ever made, from Alpha to Zendikar, Aether Revolt to Weatherlight, even really obscure sets like Portal and Renaissance. But what about Middle Ages? No? Let's find out more. So today we are documenting the history of the Magic the Gathering set that Wizards doesn't want you to see. Or, in a less clickbaity way, we are looking at the time when a hometown hero made a really interesting unofficial Magic the Gathering set until it was shot down by Watsi's team of high-priced lawyers. Now, before we get into the weeds, I'd like to give you a bit of a warning. This script took me over six months to write, and a lot of that has to do with how lacking or unreliable sources for this nearly 30-year-old story are. I had to spend a lot of time sorting through a lot of conflicting information. Virtually every scrap of info I could find had some other source saying something completely different. I had to dig through 20-year-old forums, make far, far too many notes, and exhaust every possible result on Google for MTG Middle Ages, going back dozens of pages. Even from all that work, I can't guarantee that every single fact I state is 100% true. I may have gotten a few minor details wrong, so take this story with a grain of salt. And if you have any info that contradicts something I say, then please, by all means, share it in the comments. So let's set the scene. It's the summer of 1994, and you are a diehard fan of this cool new game called Magic the Gathering. You head to your local card game store to buy some packs of the brand new set, Legends. Hoping to pull something powerful like Archon Legionnaire or Cosmic Horrors. You get to the counter and you see something truly surprising next to the display for Legends. It's an entirely new set for Magic that you've never even heard of. Middle Ages? Why wasn't that mentioned in the newest issue of The Duelist? How strange. Okay, okay, so you probably wouldn't be mistaken to think that a booster box of Middle Ages was an actual official set, unless you are particularly oblivious since one, rather than look like a typical wax pack of the era, Middle Ages packs were clear with photocopied art and sealed with scotch tape. And two, these aren't cards at all, they're stickers. Middle Ages was the brainchild of Fred Didster, a student of graphic design at Millersville University in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and a big fan of Magic the Gathering. Fred was frustrated by the stock issues that were all too common with early Magic sets, and he had an idea. What if he could take these stacks of useless extra land cards that he and his friends were accumulating and turn those into brand new cards? So that's what he did. Fred designed a brand new magic set, one that kept to magic's established themes, but experimented with new concepts. He would design the card art for each card himself, even using photos of himself and friends for a few cards. Now I can't find a definitive source for this, but it's claimed that Fred reached out to Wizards of the Coast with his idea, and they gave tentative approval to his unofficial set, provided it be distinguishable from the real Magic cards. Fred did this by switching some elements of the Magic card frame. You'll see that the card name has swapped positions with the attribute type line. Creatures' power and toughness have also moved to the top of the card. You'll also see that cards are of the typical five magic colors we all know and love, but their symbols are new designs to avoid Wizards' strict copyright ownership of the classic color symbols. With tentative approval from Wizards, Fred printed up his cards on Kanzaki Prime Line sticker sheets and then gathered some friends together to hand seed them into clear booster packs. One interesting idea they had was for cards that were rarer than a normal rare. They called these cards ungodly rares, and they were made scarce by intentionally keeping some of the printed copies out of booster packs. It's funny that Magic would do the same thing 13 years later with the addition of mythic rares in Lorwyn. In fact, 
a lot of things Fred came up with would eventually find their ways into real magic. Some quite quickly, like coin flip effects, or how the real card Ice Flow, released in Ice Age in 1995, was literally the same exact card as Fred's Castle Anthrax. But some mechanics would not be officially done for a long, long time, like the introduction of non-artifact colorless creatures, which didn't become a thing until Rise of the Eldrazi in 2010. Or, another example, cards that manipulate the value of X in other cards' costs, which didn't appear until Modern Horizons in 2019. My favorite card is actually one with an effect not found on any real magic cards to this day, not even in a silver border set. Musical Chairs, which permanently swaps players' entire board states. It's like Ginyu's powers from Dragon Ball Z. It's a super fun effect, which is why I had to peel this one off and get it on a real magic card so I could play it in Commander and make my friends miserable. That might sound way over the top in absurdity, but that's pretty on par with the typical wacky cards of the time. After all, Shaharazad came out only six months earlier and had an even wackier effect, making players play a sub-game, which are entirely separate games of magic. One example of the struggle I had with finding good sources is in trying to figure out exactly how many cards were created. That's quite tricky. The most commonly cited number is 90,000 cards. I have to say I don't trust that number. Uh, one claim made in some sources is that 1,000 sheets of cards were printed. And with 45 cards on each print sheet, that would mean a print run of 45,000 cards, which does seem a lot more accurate, but we really will never know. That still sounds like a big number, but it really is a tiny, tiny supply of cards. To put that into perspective, Alpha, Magic's lowest print run set, had a print run of 2.6 million cards. Fred would sell his handmade packs by driving a truck around and directly selling boxes to local game and comic stores. Cards are known to have been sold in stores in Michigan, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, and Maryland, which is an impressive range, but in total Fred only managed to sell 100 boxes before it all fell apart. It was exactly one month after Fred had begun selling his cards that it arrived. A cease and desist letter from Watsi. Whether Fred had permission, then it was revoked when Watsi got scared of stolen business from a wave of lookalikes, or if Fred didn't actually receive permission and Watsi was just protecting their fledgling brand is hard to say. Either way, the cease and desist was here. Fred had tried to make his cards legally distinct from Wizards IP. Pax even specifically stated that they were unlicensed, but Fred made a few mistakes that would have doomed him had a legal battle ensued in the courts. The most damaging of which was the inclusion of real magic card names in the text of his cards. For example, Mana Tax references the real card Benelish Hero. Watsi requested that Fred stop selling his cards and destroy his remaining stock of stickers. Instead of complying, Fred hosted a Middle Ages tournament in Millersville where he gave away as many cards as he could. What was left, he sold to a local game store owner, Dave Munster, who kept them until he passed away a few years ago, which is why there's a fairly healthy supply currently on sale on eBay. So that's the story of Middle Ages, a fascinating story of Magic's first, but not last, unofficial set. I think Middle Ages cards are really interesting. I'm really happy I got to preserve this story for future Magic fans. I think Middle Ages cards are some of the most unique cards you can add to your collection right now, since they have such an interesting story behind them. And while you can't find Middle Ages cards there, you can use our TCG Player affiliate link to buy any real magic cards your heart desires, and you'll be supporting my efforts to keep card game history alive. Thank you. 
And as we end this video, I'd like to know, have you ever seen Middle Ages cards? Do you have a few in your collection? Was this the first time you'd ever even heard of this set? Would you like me to cover some of the other Magic the Gathering unofficial sets? Because yes, there are more, like the infamous Havoc the Bothering. Let me know. And uh, I will leave you guys with that. So make sure to join our Discord where you can talk about dead card games all day long. And check out our Instagram for some cool pictures of some of the cards in my collection. And I'll see you guys next time.